Afghanistan. Kabul is the most populous city in Afghanistan, with 3.5 million citizens. The reason behind the city being the target of invasions isn't just because it's the capital and it's home to precious stones and metals. The middle route of the Silk Road passed from Kabul onto India, then into China, making it a very practical and accessible area. The year is 1979, and the Soviet troops have just invaded the area. Little did they all know that this would be the beginning of 10 years of brutal fighting against the Afghan rebels. Before the intervention of the Soviets, a radical military group overthrew the current Afghan centrist group, and power was divided into two Marxist-Leninist political parties, Kalk and Parchim, masses and flags respectively, who formed the People's Democratic Party of Afghanistan. The first key events of the war was the Soviet assassination of Afghanistan's communist government leader, Hafizullah Amin. Prior to the assassination, there had been a civil war going on because Amin had tried to sweep aside Muslim tradition to become more like the West, which obviously didn't work because the majority of the population followed Islam. When the Soviet seized the nation, General Secretary Barbara Karmal was inserted into power. He led the Parchim and served strictly the Soviet's commands and interests, acting like their representative in the government. A certain group named Mujahideen, formed by Islamic rebels, arose and started to spread throughout the entire country. In the beginning, the Soviets decided to leave the rebels for the Afghan army to deal with, but they proved themselves to be ineffective and were quickly weakened by mass isolations. Next, the war was settled into a stalemate, with 100,000 Soviet troops controlling cities, towns, and major garrisons, while the Mujahideen, also known as strugglers, wandered about the countryside. The Soviets attempted different measures to crush the insurgents, but the terrorists mostly avoided their attacks. The Soviets then attempted to eliminate the Mujahideen's civilian support by bombing and depopulating the rural areas. This caused a massive fight from the countryside, and by no later than 1982, about 2.8 million Afghans were seeking refuge in Pakistan, while others had fled to Iran. That's where the U.S. comes in. Obviously, an Islam-based country is a very unlikely ally to the United States, but they intervened by going against the Soviets as an attempt to help the non-communist civilians in Afghanistan. These events were the means by which the country fighting in the Cold War, U.S. and USSR, intervened. While the Soviets invaded and took the control of the country, the Americans countered by supplying troops for the anti-communist groups within the country. The USSR's purpose was to boost their new and staggering state, while the Americans uh, wanted to help the Africans and so in the stop the Soviets from sp spreading their sphere of influence. The effects of these interventions were the deaths of millions of Africans, as well as the scattering of them and dispersion in neighboring countries. Also, it led to the agreement which made the Soviets withdraw from the country and opened up space for the Mujahideen to take control. The transitional government was then formed, sponsored by various rebel factions, proclaimed an Islamic Republic. After the communist president was ousted from power in 1992. When the Mujahideen took over, Mohammad Najibullah became the president of Afghanistan. He was a strict ruler but attempted to relax the intense control. However, in 1992, many rebels grouped together with the government revolutionaries stood up against Najibullah in Kabul, which had no chance but to flee from power after those in intense protests. This led to a bloody civil war after the Soviets departed. Furthermore, this war led to the deaths of one million Afghans, the fleeing of one-third of the pre-war population of three million people, and the displacement of another two million. Finally, the country became one of the least developed countries in the world.